In this example problem, I want you to draw H2SO4. Now hopefully you recognize this ion, and you remember that when you have hydrogens stuck onto that ion, it's going to be an acid. This is the sulfate ion with H plus attached to it. That'll be sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid from the sulfate ion. So I'm going to have you go ahead and draw sulfuric acid. Do your Lewis structure, come up with your electron group geometry, your molecular geometry, and then go ahead and come up with any deviations that you're going to have. I'll go ahead and give a hint in just a moment. If you need it, skip the pause. But we'll go ahead and pause now. If you needed the hint, I want to remind you that since this is sulfuric acid, the sulfate ion can be drawn first all by itself, and then we can stick the H pluses on as needed. That way you don't have to try to think through what's going on with having so many atomic centers. Go ahead and pause if that helped. Okay, now let's go ahead and work through this one. We're going to work with just the sulfate ion to start with. That's the easiest way to do this one. So sulfate, I've got S and I've got O. I have one sulfur. I have four oxygens. Sulfur brings six electrons. Each oxygen brings six electrons as well. That gives me a total of six from this set. We have 24 from this set. It has a minus two on that ion. So I'll have an extra two electrons right there. If you are forgetting that or you're getting the wrong charge or anything else, I want to remind you when these pop off, they become H plus. So we'll have H plus, we'll have two H pluses. That means you have to have SO4 two minus in order to account for that plus two worth of charge. Make sure that you're breaking the bonds correctly and that you're giving the right charges. And if you made a mistake on that, it may even be worth just going and restarting the video and working through it on a blank piece of paper just to make sure that you can fix that mistake. Now, I've got my 32 electrons to work with. So I have 32 electrons. Sulfur is my least electronegative. It's going to be in the center. All of my oxygens around it. So then I place my 32 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. I've used up all of my electrons. I can see right away that I'm at my octet for everything. So I may stop right there and say, okay, great, I've got my octet rule fulfilled. This is my Lewis structure. Hopefully you didn't do that. Hopefully you also said to yourself, right, but I also need to consider formal charge. Sulfur brought six electrons to the party. It currently has access to one out of each of the bonding pairs. One, two, three, four. It brought six electrons. It currently has four electrons. In other words, it's going to be at a plus two charge. My oxygens, they all brought six electrons. They currently have two, four, six, and one of these, giving them a total of seven. Started with six, they currently have seven they'll all be a minus one charge. And since all of these are configured the same way right now, I only had to figure that one out once and then I can write it in for everything. We can spot that we have a plus two charge and minus one charges, and that is something that should not happen. So we can go ahead and say, some of these should kick in some electrons and make a double bond and that will alleviate the minus one charge and the plus two charge, even though we have to break the octet rule to do it. As soon as we say that, ah, wait a minute though, if I'm making double bonds here and that means sulfur is going over, we better be sure that it's allowed to violate the octet rule. Going to our periodic table, we see sulfur is in row three. That means it's filled up its three S's and its three P's. It's going to start working on the four S's next, and then finally getting back to the three D's. In other words, we have three D's at a similar radius. We're allowed to break 
the octet rule when we have to in order to alleviate things. Sulfur is allowed to break the octet rule. We know that we're going to be fine. So we can go ahead and resonate them inward, make some double bonds here. I used up two of the electrons from these outermost elect uh, oxygens here. So I basically took that third pair and kicked it in to make the double bond here. Did the same thing over here. So I have a single bond right there and right there with my two, four, and six. Two, four, and six unshared electrons. This would be my, uh, my uh, Lewis structure for the sulfate ion. Now I double check again. I say sulfur has its octet broken, but it's allowed to. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Same thing over here, same thing down here. Octet rule is fulfilled. I check my charges. Sulfur brought six electrons. It currently has one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a happy camper. We go to the oxygen. Two, four, five, six currently. It started with six. It currently has six. So also have no charge for either of these two oxygens. These oxygens brought six electrons. They have two, four, six, and one, giving it seven. Start with six, currently have seven, minus one charge. Same thing over here. Now, I can also expect that my H plus is going to dock right there, get rid of that charge. Actually, I should scribble out the pluses as well. And we can even imagine that that octet, the, sorry, that lone pair has now turned into a bonding pair. Because remember, these lines are just standing in as a pair of electrons. And so my structure should look like this. I'll have H, single bond, oxygen, single bond, sulfur, single bond, oxygen, single bond, hydrogen. Let's go ahead and put on my other electrons that I still have there. And let's draw the rest for sulfur. And I'll still have two there and two there, two here and two there. So you can see that this is the same molecule that we had started writing over here. It's just a lot cleaner looking now. Now suppose that you hadn't done it all the way correctly. We'll work with that for the moment as well. And I'm going to show you that they're still going to give you the same result. So I want to show them side by side. So I'd have that sulfur. Let's just say that this one I'm going to leave alone and it's still going to have that minus one charge. 2, 4, and 6 still on it. Notice I had to shift it over a little bit because of that letter. That's not meaning anything physical. That's just me trying to make it visible. So we'll have an oxygen here, here, and that extra pair of electrons that I had right there, we're just going to go ahead and make that into my H, sorry, my hydrogen that's there. Same thing right here. You can see that all I've do, done is bring in an H+. Plus. This pair got turned into a bond. Same thing over here. And that's this structure here. Sulfur would, sulfur would still have that plus 2 charge associated with it. So you can see we're going to have the plus 2 with a minus and a minus right next to it. Now if we had gotten that far and we still didn't recognize that, hey, that's not going to be so stable, why not kick in some electrons, make a double bond, get rid of that plus charge? That would be a kind of our final chance to have that realization. But if we are doing our three-dimensional structure, either one of these is still going to give us the same result. Because when we go to count our electron groups, we'll do it on the correct one first. Sulfur, we have one group, two groups, three groups, four groups total. We have one, two, three, and four groups total. So when we give each of these the AXE notation for the sulfur, Remember, I'm just doing sulfur right now. I'm not worrying about the oxygens yet. That would be an A, X4, because I have four bonding regions, E0, because I don't have any unshared electrons on sulfur. I come to this one, I have one, two, three, four regions. So it'll be A, X4, no non-bonding electrons around it, so E0 once again. Exactly the same geometry either way. That's exactly what we expected, because remember, these are resonance structures of each other. And what we've said is that the electrons are moving close to the speed of light. The nuclei are staying still on that time scale. 
And so we should have the same geometry with the electrons just zipping around it a little differently and with us accounting for it a little differently. But the nuclei should be in the same spots. Now we're going to go ahead and draw this into three dimensions. AX4 geometry, that's my trigonal set of geometries. I'll have my sulfur in the center, oxygen going up. I'll do an oxygen double bond coming over here. I kept those in the plane because it's a little hard to do the wedges and the dashes on double bonds. You can still do it. It just looks messier. So I'm going to have my single bond coming out, my other single bond going back. I'll have an oxygen there and an oxygen there and there'll be a hydrogen stuck to each of those. Now if we were being really proper about it, we would also want to have proper geometries over on these, and so we would have to have our electrons configured for each of these two oxygens. I'm not going to require us to do that right now. Now in terms of our deviations, because these are resonance structures, I wouldn't say that we have to do much uh, for deviations. We can predict that this is going to be about 109 degrees, 109.5 degrees, in between each of these. If we were pressed to try to make an assumption about it though, we might say, well, because we're locking in this resonance form by having these H pluses on it, I mean, we can't have the double bond shift over here anymore. Right now, it's probably going to stay locked in like this. These are going to take up more space. It's probably going to squish these closer than the 109 degrees. So the space in between those is probably going to be less than 109.5 spacing over here is probably going to be greater than 109.5. So you can see this example question had a lot of things hiding inside of it. But at the end of the day, none of them ended up biting us all that much. We just had to approach it in a fairly straightforward way. And even if we forgot about handling those resonance structures and handling the formal charges, we'd still be able to get the correct overall geometry for this one.